So we've made the outline and we've made the profile and here's the wood that we're going to be using this outline and profile to carve a 3D last. First a few things about the wood. The wood that we're using here is what's called a spoke. This is ash wood, it's locally grown. And a spoke is called a spoke because you can see it's a section of log. There's the bark bottom and the, these radiate like the spokes of a wheel. And you can see that when this, this is uh, like that, so these two were once together like that. And uh, you can see that this is already a lash shape. And so it's a very economical way of cutting the wood from the tree. And also ten, the tangential uh, shrinkage is much less along the bark than it is radially uh, through the center of the tree. Uh, the woods that we use, ash is okay, but as you can see in detail, there's quite a bit of difference between the uh, softer summer growth and the hard, very slow growth of the winter. Um, woods like beech, maple and hornbeam are very, very uh, smooth and no matter what direction you carve them in, they all have the same consistency. Woods that are not good to use are woods like pine and deal and softwoods because they will break up and I'll show you what I mean. So if, if you're lasting up the shoe uh, and uh, by hand as you do for bespoke orthopedic and you put a rivet in and then when you've uh, started to stitch the shoe together you take the rivet out and then next time you make a shoe you put another rivet in and that goes into virtually the same place and you take that out and then you go to make another shoe and uh, you put a third rivet in and it goes in almost in the same place. What happens is with woods like uh, beech and maple and hornbeam you can put 20, 30, 40 rivets into that one little three square millimeter space and the wood will still be intact. You do that with pine and it'll be destroyed after one or two. Another wood that's not good is oak because it's full of tannin and so you put your rivet in, it's made out of steel, everything's wet, the tannin just dyes your shoe blue. And also with oak there's a very great deal of difference between the summer and the winter growth. Uh, woods like lime are okay but they're very very soft and can be easily destroyed. Okay, so what we're going to do is carve it on the bandsaw. Now just to give you an idea, before the bandsaw came along, when we made last, we used a, a saw like this to cut it out. Um, so it had been split into the spokes. We cut that out with a bow saw like that. And then uh, we had something like this, and we used to actually cut it out like that. Obviously, we had a, a proper bench to do it on. And it actually, you know, when we've had power cuts here, I've done that, and it's actually quite efficient. Um, not as time-saving, uh, time-consuming as you'd think. And then with a good quality rasp, you'd be working it by hand. And when I was apprenticed, this is what I did with Tom Steenhoven at Lobs. We worked, um, worked with this very rasp. Okay, but what we've got here is the bandsaw, which is, of course, much quicker. And modern techniques use turning lathes and computer-controlled uh, lathes, which uh, just turn around and do it by hand, uh, do it by machine. For bespoke orthopedic, the unique quality of what we're doing is we're taking a foot, making some measures, taking those measures and making a last that's absolutely unique from first principles for that client with all of their defects and uh, all the help we're going to give them built into the last from first principles. And you can't do that on a machine. So this uh, video, this demonstration, is not an instructional video about how to make a last. It, uh, there's too many pitfalls. There's too many dangers. Only do this if you have very competent guidance. This is a demonstration of how it's done. 
So we have a bandsaw, it's very sharp. Uh, the sharper the better. The most dangerous bandsaw is a dull bandsaw. A bandsaw with a blunt blade is extremely dangerous. Uh, here's your guard. Uh, we have to open it so that it's high enough to get the wood through, but no higher. So we go up there. And uh, the principle is that you have three points on the table at any one time. As soon as you go down to two points or one, then it starts to get dangerous and, and you don't do it. So that's the guidance, is that you're always working with three points on the, on the table. The table itself, I put a piece of wood on because bandsaw tables have grooves and bumpy bits where the keyway goes through. And so this is all smooth, so nothing catches when you're working on, on it. Uh, we have a, a dust extractor, which makes a lot of noise, so I'm going to switch it off. And I have goggles that are specially uh, made, prescription goggles, protect myself from anything that might fly up. And ear defenders, because this um, is, is you know, well over 85 uh, decibels. So uh, those are the points uh, and, um, that need to be followed. And uh, say again, don't do this unless you have very professional supervision of experienced people.